Call of the Void contains strong language and possible trigger warnings and is intended for mature audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Hi, I'm Deacon. Hi, I'm Jack. And welcome to Call of the Void, a podcast about all things weird and macabre. Now, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, some famous corpses that I don't know if you have heard about or anything like that. There are quite a few out there, like um, Vladimir Lenin is one of them. I'm not going to talk about him, but... Um, he is one of the famous corpses that you can read about on the internet. Um, some of them have like really fascinating stories. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and so I wanted to talk about a couple of them and like the process that went into embalming their bodies and how they're so pristine and preserved the way that they are. Um, yeah, this- I was going to say, what do you mean by the famous corpses? Like, not corpses of famous people. No, but just, well, I mean, some, maybe some of them are, but the, like these are the these Black are, Dahlia or something. Yeah, these are these are bodies that um, people know about because they're still around and they haven't decayed. Um, what? One of which is one of which is two thousand years old. Um, all of the corpses that I'm going to talk about today are um, of women. Mm-hmm. Uh, this might be this might be a topic that I might bring up again later because there is a shit ton of like really cool corpse stories out there. As weird as that sounds, okay. Um, so I might I might revisit this topic. This might be the first topic that we revisit later on down the road. Um, mm-hmm. but I mean we'll see we'll see what happens. I've also kind of been wanting to revisit. Uh, this room does not exist. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we'll we'll see. Um but uh that said, um so the first one I'm going to talk about uh is uh Ava Peron. Okay. Um so she was the wife of Argentinian president Juan Peron. Mm-hmm. Um so uh she was very, very well loved. She was a very popular woman, um, and a lot of her, a lot of her popularity is what made Juan Perón so popular. Um, but she, uh, so to start off, she died of um, cervical cancer, which mm-hmm. her husband did not tell her about. So wait. He what? didn't want her he didn't want her to appear weak to the people of Argentina. So he kept taking her in for surgeries and treatments but did not let the doctors tell her what was wrong with her. How old was she? Uh hmm. That's a good question. I forget how old she was. Hang on. Because I was going to say, the the only time that I can see that being remotely okay is I know somebody who had a situation where their grandfather uh, was terminal, and when they got the diagnosis, he legit only had a week to live. So they were like, yeah, we're not going to tell him because we don't want him to, like, freak out and have his last week on Earth be hell. Yeah. So, like, in that kind of a situation, you know, I can understand why a family member might make that decision. But if she was young... She was 33. Oh, shit. So, yeah, he... Uh, according to everything I was reading, um, he didn't want her to appear weak because her popularity was what kept his popularity up. Mm-hmm. And so 
they essentially pretended um, like nothing was wrong. He kept taking her in for treatments and surgeries and refused to let the doctors or anybody else tell her what was actually wrong with her. Uh, and it ended up killing her. Um, actually, near the end of her life, um, like near the, the very end, he even went so far as to have her lobotomized without her knowledge or consent. Um, what year did this take place? Uh, like 1952 is when she died, I believe. Oh, shit. Yeah, 1952. So, yeah, like, what I was saying before, like, I said, I said something along the lines of, you know, but if she was young, that's not even what I meant. Like, she's young, has her whole life ahead of her, and, like... This guy is only doing that to keep up appearances. Basically. What a douche canoe. Um, but, so, um, when she died, Juan had plans for her corpse and had been talking to a doctor named Pedro Ara. Uh, and, or Ara, whatever. It, it's, it. He was, um, he said that he was immediately ready to begin preserving her body, like, as soon as she died. Uh, he started work on her body an hour after she died. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, he considered himself an artist. Oh, my and God. Don't they all? Yeah, became... <laughs> uh, obsessive is a word. <laughs> obsessive is a word. <laughs> Uh, became a bit obsessive over, uh, Ava's body. Um, during his process, he left all of her organs intact. Uh, he made only two tiny, tiny, tiny incisions, one in her neck and one in her foot to keep the body as pristine and perfect as possible. Um, he injected the body with uh, wax and preservatives and then covered the body with a thin piece of plastic, like a thin film. Mm -hmm. um, this process took an entire year and it cost about $100,000. Um, and it resulted in a corpse that looks almost artificial and wax-like according to people who saw the body. Um, one person uh, said that they tapped on the corpse and it sounded hollow like a mannequin. Why would you tap on a corpse? I don't know. Um, but after that, Dr. Ara was never too far away from the body. Uh, he kept lovingly idolizing the corpse. But did he put a music box in her chest? Uh, no, it doesn't seem like it, but... Call back to the last episode that I'm still reeling from. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, he kept, like, lovingly doting on her and fixing her hair and doing all that kind of stuff. Um, her body sat at the Ministry of Labor for 13 days and then was transferred to the General Confederation of Labor uh, to wait until a monument and tomb could be built for her, and it never was. Um, because Juan Perón was forced out of office in 1955 and he was forced to flee to Spain. Um, and he left Ava's body behind with Dr. Ara, of course, <laughs> um, of course. who spent a lot of his time perfecting his work of art. Uh, I the new... To, to quote Shane Midday, I don't like this man. The new president uh, of Argentina found out that Ava's body was still being held in Argentina and fearing an uprising from Peronists, which were people who are real big fans of Juan <laughs> Peron, uh, decided to secretly have her body buried immediately. 
So he had the head of a military intelligence uh, committee, whatever, um, had him seize the body in the dead of night. And he was supposed to load her onto his truck and take her to be buried in a cemetery in Buenos Aires. That didn't happen. <laughs> well, when you said supposed to, my brain <laughs> went, oh no. <laughs> so he loaded the body into the truck and he traveled to a spot where he could take a nap with the dead body in his truck. Um, and... <laughs> When he woke up, he found the truck surrounded by candles and flowers. So he freaked out. <laughs> he transferred <laughs> the body <laughs> because nobody nobody was supposed to know. <laughs> I love that this is your reaction. happened in my brain <laughs> <laughs> so you said that and i had a moment where i almost wished we were uh video recording again because the look on my face was like oh shit and then i just was like what would it be to be this guy <laughs> just like oh i'm just gonna take a nap there's a fucking corpse in my car but whatever i'm gonna take a nap and then you wake up and there's an entire fucking vigil around your car <laughs> and you're like oh shit <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so nobody so he 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 took the body in the dead of night. He basically stole the body from Dr. Ara. So nobody was supposed to know that he had this body and he freaked the fuck out because he was like how why is there a vigil around my truck? Nobody was supposed to know that I took the body. Was it all so, the doctor? No, apparently not. But he freaked out and he transferred the body to another truck, a different truck, not the same truck, a different one. Drove to a different spot than the cemetery instead of taking her to the cemetery like he was fucking supposed to. Yeah. Drove to another spot and decided he was going to spend another night. When he woke up, <laughs> the same thing happened again. <laughs> So, he, <laughs> he freaks the absolute fuck out, um, yeah. and instead of taking the body to the cemetery like he was supposed to do twice, uh, decides to stash the body in the attic above his office in the military intelligence headquarters. Oh, no. <laughs> Which... <laughs> to be fair, isn't very military or intelligent, so. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh. oh, God. Oh, I'm fuck. crying. But, so. <laughs> um, anyway, she, she remained hidden up in the attic for a year. Uh, and, <laughs> until the president found out that the head of the military intelligence... Uh, never took the body to the cemetery and had him fired and was like, you know what? We have to get this body out of here, like, right now. So her body was shipped to Milan, Italy, mm -hmm. which is a very far distance away from fucking Argentina. Yeah. <laughs> um. So he had her sent to Milan, Italy, where she was buried under the name Maria Magi Mag Magistris. Mm -hmm. original um where she stayed until 1977 mm -hmm. shock and surprise after the president was murdered by peronist guerrillas <laughs> oh no uh the uprising that he was previously trying to avoid that happened anyway <laughs> uh, um that his death ended up revealing uh, the location of Ava's gravesite in Milan uh, mm -hmm. to the Argentinian government, who sent a priest and a colonel to retrieve the body uh, and send it to 
uh, Juan Perón, who was still in exile in Spain. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> she was loaded onto a bakery truck and sent to Madrid. Mm-hmm. Uh, guess who was called out of retirement to tend to Ava's body? <laughs> was it the doctor? It was Dr. Ara, Woo-hoo! corpse creep extraordinaire. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, he really does have staying power, though. So Juan kept her in his dining room after the repairs were done to Ava's body. And uh, his new wife groomed Ava every morning. So combed what? her hair and Oh, oh fixed my God. It. What is wrong with all of these people? Yeah, right. Uh, that's very creepy to me, but whatever. So, <laughs> Juan gets reelected again as the president of Argentina for the third time in mm-hmm. 1973. And he left Madrid to go back to Argentina with his wife, Isabel. Mm-hmm. And he leaves Ava's corpse behind again. <laughs> so, can in 19- 19... <laughs> can we just do something for this poor woman... So she yeah, could be like at peace. she she bounced around like every fucking where, but <sighs> so in 1974, um, a year after Juan Perón died, uh, Perón's guerrillas, uh, kidnapped and held the previous president. You remember the one who tried to hide Eva's body and keep <laughs> to keep an uprising from happening. Yep, yep. <clears throat> um, he like they kidnapped and held his body ransom until Isabel, who now, because Juan had died, had become the president of Argentina. Mm-hmm. Um, until she went and brought the body from uh, Madrid to Argentina. Mm-hmm. Um, and after she was returned, she finally underwent a few final touch-ups before being displayed briefly beside Juan's closed coffin. Um, So Isabel made sure that... Were those touch-ups done by Dr. Ara? No, it wasn't this time. Uh, It was by a different guy. Uh, But he said that 20 years later, she was still basically perfect. Like, there really wasn't anything that was wrong with her except for, like, the bottoms of her feet, and she was crammed into a coffin that was maybe a little bit too small for her. Hmm. Um, but before Isabel became deposed and, uh, or after she was deposed in 1976, um, Ava's body was finally returned to her family and buried in Buenos Aires. Uh, and it is currently in a steel bunker, 25, 20 feet underground. You know what? Good. This poor, <laughs> poor woman. Yeah, like, they, they said that it's supposed to stand up to nuclear fallout and grave robbers, so <laughs> I mean, hopefully. Hopefully. I mean, on one hand, though, I, I, it is my sincere hope in my life that I have at least one person who is so devoted to me that they would fight for my corpse. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) Like, could you imagine? Like, this woman was so well-beloved that all of this shit happened because of her corpse. Yeah. I'm I'm, I'm really glad that that, that she's at peace now, though. Hopefully this is her final resting place. Hopefully nobody comes and steals her again or does some other dumb bullshit. I mean, okay. Hopefully. Like, if anything else happens when i die i will personally go haunt whoever did it (laughs) just to prove a point but so yes we do have some cases of famous people Mm -hmm. um who ended up becoming famous corpses um and you know i i just this is a batshit insane story (laughs) for (laughs) things that could happen to a corpse. I mean, there, there's another one that I might talk about later on. Um, uh, I, you may have heard this story before, but the, the corpse ended up, uh, being used as a prop in like, um, 
like a freak show, like a traveling circus thing? I didn't know, but I know that was it Poltergeist? I know that there was one of those movies that was like a cursed movie and a lot of people involved with it died horrible, horrible deaths uh, and they had used actual human remains as props, but that's yeah. the closest that... Yeah, so th- there, there, is, there is like, it's a story about a corpse that like, it gets transported around everywhere and it ends up being like a... Um, uh, some guy gets it for like a, a haunted house basically and it's hung up because he thought it was just like a prop skeleton and it really wasn't Aww. um or you know it, it's a fucking crazy story and i'll probably get back to it eventually but so yeah. th- there's there's well, some I feel pretty bad for that guy then yeah like th- there's some well the the actual like the records about the body in and of itself were kind of lost to time Mm -hmm. and nobody knew uh she like it was it was a lady and her body was just kind of you know it people had kept it in a bunch of different places and he just thought that it was a a prop Hmm. um but yeah it's you know kind of there's there's all kinds of weird ass stories like that um this one, however, is a, is popular only for another reason. Um, do you know the name Rosalina Lombardo? No. Okay. You might actually know uh, of the picture of Rosalina Lombardo, though. If I can get it. Well, I can't get it to open. But uh, I was going to send you the picture. But it's the, the girl in the... Uh, Sicilian, um, what is it? The Palermo, yeah, the Palermo catacombs in Sicily. Mm-hmm. Um, the girl whose eyes open sometimes. I've never. Okay, I'm. I I, I'm a bad Italian as far as that's concerned. <laughs> so I don't like. I'll get you on pronunciation, but when it comes to certain things like that, I'm like, what? (laughs) Okay, yeah. The so she was uh she was the daughter of um Sicilian official Mario Lombardo. She died of pneumonia at age two. Mm -hmm. Um and her father couldn't really deal with just putting her to rest. So I'm sorry, how old was she? She was two. Two. Uh, Okay, that's what I thought you said. All right. So instead of, you know, just burying her, um, he sought out a man named Alfredo Salafia. That's it. Okay. Um, Who was working. I swear for a moment I thought you were going to (laughs) say Dr. (laughs) Dr. (laughs) Otto. No. uh, He's the villain in all of these stories. Now this man's name was Alfredo <coughs> Salafia, um, which is arguably a funnier name, but, uh, <laughs> but so he had this um, miraculous formula to uh, to embalm the dead and keep them forever. Um, I mean, if you look at her, she really does look like she's just asleep, like. Um, her, you know, her cheeks are still round. She shows like zero signs of decay, like nothing. Um, <clears throat> she is one of the best preserved money mummies of like all time. Hmm. Um, but so this was in 1920. So that would be. 99 years ago. Oh, shit. And she is still very, very well preserved. Huh. Um, a lot of people call her the Sleeping Beauty because uh, she almost appears to just be asleep. Um, she looks like she could wake up at any moment and, like, shake the dust off of the little bow in her hair. Or, mm-hmm. Like, like she... <sighs> Yeah, uh, there is, uh, what is, do, 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 uh, Dario P. 
Piombino Mescali, that's his name. Uh, he found. You know, if you ever want me to read these for you, <laughs> just send them my way. <laughs> um, he had a, or he found out the recipe. He found some notes from um, Salafia, mm-hmm. and figured out that what actually is in her body is one part glycerin, one part formulin saturate, saturated in both zinc sulfate and chloride, and one part of an alcohol solution saturated with uh, salicylic acid. Hmm. Um, and he also gave like uh, a little bit of um, like a some wax and stuff uh epsom salts and stuff like that to like fill up problem areas on her face and stuff to keep um you know to keep everything from decaying yeah um and to keep her skin looking plump and whatever um but a lot of people uh during the day a lot of people will come and visit her and it appears as though Uh, Because her eyes are slightly open. Um, And you can see, like, the, the, like, blue irises, you know. Uh, And and a lot of people say that, like, when they go to look at her or whatever, it appears as though through the day her eyes open slightly and then close back at the end of the night. A lot of people have said that, you know, they think that she's haunted. Why would Um, they... Why would they preserve her with her eyes slightly open i don't know um but let's see if i can find boop a doop boop 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 um (laughs) i'm gonna send you a video okay So yeah, here is the time lapse if you want to see it for yourself. But she like it looks like her eyes open a little bit and then they close back at like the end of the night apparently. Oh. Um and I'll but, <clears throat> I'll include a link to that video in uh the description of this episode. Yeah, it's I mean it's very neat, but the so the explanation that uh mascali says is that it's an optical illusion yeah um that the light filters through the side windows in the catacombs and when it hits her face certain ways uh it makes her eyes appear as though they open um but you know uh yes that makes sense also at the same time people have speculated that it could also be due to the changing temperatures in the catacombs themselves because temperature fluctuation can also make um <clears throat> but she is a 99 year old mummy that still looks like pristine which i mean is a testament to the people who embalmed her body yeah but holy shit <laughs> i mean it's it's really uncanny it just it looks like she fell asleep but yeah uh that one is mostly famous because a lot of people think that that her like that the, the corpse is you know haunted but you know uh, the last one that I wanted to talk to you about is yeah. uh, Lady Di. Not Princess that one. Oh. <laughs> As I'm saying Princess Diana. <laughs> I knew that you were going to ask. No, not that Princess, one. Not that um, one. <laughs> <laughs> Bad. <clears throat> I should say the Lady of Di, to be more specific. Um she is what was her name she's also called the <laughs> she's also called the 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 diva mummy um diva or diva diva okay so i was um, gonna say what is diva she is an over 2100 year old mummy okay 
uh, from the Western Han Dynasty and is the best preserved ancient human that we have ever found. Um, so in 1971, there were some workers digging uh, an air raid shelter near the city of Changsha when they dis- discovered an enormous Han Dynasty era tomb. Um, inside, they found a thousand perfectly preserved artifacts uh, and a tomb belonging to uh, Xin Zui or Zhui, I guess, uh, mm-hmm. the wife of um, the ruler of the Han, you know, fiefdom of Dai. Um, yeah. She is also like called the Lady of Dai or Lady Dai. Uh, and she died somewhere between 178 and 148 BC. <clears throat> she was around 50 when she died. And the objects inside her tomb uh, obviously indicated a woman of importance and wealth here's here's the thing about the lady of Dai. Uh-huh. um she had been buried for over two millennia but whenever they found her her skin was still moist and elastic her joints were flexible wow. every feature still remained intact down to her eyelashes and the hair in her nostrils <gasps> she still had blood that remained in her veins that you could see uh like blood clots and things like that. When she was removed from the tomb, oxygen took an immediate up toll on her body. And so the state in which she can be seen in today uh, is a little bit less than, but she was perfectly preserved. Um, an autopsy that was done uh, revealed all of her organs were still intact, even down to the lungs, vagus, the like nerve, um, which is as thin as hair that should have decayed a long ass time ago. Uh, blood clots were found in her veins. Um, and as well as evidence of a coronary heart attack. Uh, she also had like, you could tell that she like, they, they on looking at her body, they could tell that she had a tapeworm. Like they knew literally everything like in very, very, minute detail things that were you know going on with her body um uh she had high blood pressure high cholesterol liver disease and gallstones she died of a heart attack at the age of 50 brought on by um an overindulgent diet and a lack of exercise Uh, apparently a gallstone had blocked um uh It, it caused bile to build up mm-hmm. in her body, uh, which caused her immediate pain and then caused her to have a heart attack. Um, when they were still studying her organs, the pathologists found 138 undigested melon seeds in her esophagus, stomach, and intestines, which means that because melon seeds take about an hour to gi- ti- digest, we know what her last meal was. Hmm. That's how well preserved this fucking mummy is. That's yeah. Um she was found in an eight in an airtight tomb twelve meters underground, which was locked uh inside four layers of coffins. So they put her in a coffin, and they put that coffin in a coffin, and then they put that coffin in a coffin, and then they put that coffin in a coffin. <laughs> Excessive, I know. <laughs> They put that flea in a box and put that box in another box. Um, if that's an internet reference, I'm an old man. No, it is Emperor's New Groove. Oh, uh, I, I'm still an old man. <laughs> <laughs> Never seen that movie um, in its entirety. There was a thick layer of white paste-like soil on the floor. Uh, her body had been swaddled in 20 layers of, of silk. She was found in... 80 liters of an unknown liquid that was mildly acidic uh, with some magnesium in it. And they don't necessarily know, and they're still trying to figure out, and there's a big debate, but the the liquid was like a reddish color. Mm -hmm. They don't know if she was actually, like the the liquid was put into her coffin before she was buried, or if over time little bits of like 
water molecules seeped their way through the ground and into the coffin through like little holes and stuff because very possible that that's what happened too yeah um but they found the the unknown liquid uh the layers of caskets were put inside a compartment in the center of a funnel um like it was almost like an upside down pyramid Mm -hmm. they clay lined it they covered it in in charcoal and then pretty much uh like five tons of charcoal was put on top of it and then everything else was uh like dirt and earth um so yeah because it was so airtight any real bacteria that would cause decay died out immediately um so yeah uh she is again over 2000 years old and is still like a very pristine corpse and that is very rare like to know as much about her like and be able to tell exactly what happened leading up to her death yeah like they know specifically what kind of melon it was it was musk melon (laughs) <laughs> that's how pristine this body was and this wasn't the work of somebody who embalmed the body she was just buried this way she didn't really have any like chemicals added to her body or whatever she was just buried this way and because of the way she was buried it kept her body in like pristine condition which yeah. is wild <laughs> But yeah, I mean, there are some very, very interesting stories about uh, very famous corpses. And I very much encourage, like, if the, for me, this kind of thing is, like, very fucking interesting. Um, as someone who wants to go into, the, like, yeah. funeral <laughs> industry, like, this is, like, intriguing as fuck to me. So this is a, it, right up my alley, but... If you want to, you know, go out and, you know, learn more about some really cool stories and wild ass stories about the Ava Peron or, <laughs> uh, <laughs> or whatever else, like there's some really good ones out there. And I highly suggest that you, you know, go out and see what you can find because there's some really cool ones, some really, really good stories. And here I was uh, thinking there there was this um, there was this mummy found uh, a little while back that like the skin looked like really le- leathery and everything but and there was obvious decay but the skin was preserved enough that you could clearly make out a tattoo that they had on their arm yeah. You know, and I think that's awesome. And then there are these corpses that don't look like corpses. (laughs) Yeah, there are corpses that look like they were just people sleeping. Shit, dude. I look like a corpse and I'm still alive. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, same fam. Oh, God. I need sleep. (laughs) (laughs) But, yeah, so I just, you know, I thought I would... give you some insight into the things that i look up (laughs) whenever i'm bored um but there's some really cool stories out there and i want to encourage people to you know go out and take a take a look it's in a book yeah reading rainbow (laughs) (laughs) who will never listen to the show um Yeah, I'm glad we had this some laughs this episode because what I'm going to talk about probably in our next episode or the one after, uh, some heavy shit. <laughs> so, yeah, that so, tends to be a theme. Yeah, so I'm glad that uh, we got to laugh about a guy a getting... candlelight vigil. A guy getting freaked out, but, like, I would love to have been just, like... A fly on the wall? Yeah, or, like, or the fucking predator. Just, <laughs> like, <laughs> invisible in the trees watching this happen. 
I mean, again, he he had no idea that anybody even knew that he had uh, Ava's body. So maybe it was and Ava. Nobody was nobody was supposed to know. They, they just some fucking flowers and candles were around the truck whenever he woke up, and he was like, "What the fuck." <laughs> <laughs> The fact that it happened twice, and when you said that she put, that he put her body in the attic or whatever, part of me was like, oh my god, don't tell me, the next morning he woke up and there were flowers and candles. I would have died. I wish. I I wish. I would have ceased to exist on this podcast (laughs) if you had said that. I really wish that was what happened, but (laughs) I mean, my question is what, like, who has the idea of, oh, fuck, I can't drive this to the cemetery because somebody knows, so let me just hide it in the attic above my fucking office. (sighs) Like, what kind of (laughs) dumbass? That's some Edgar Allan Poe bullshit. (laughs) That's some Telltale Heart shit. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Except he should have hit it in the floorboards like a fucking champ. <laughs> but that said, uh, mm. I think that's about all the time we've got for this episode. Again, yeah. we might revisit this topic later on. Uh, I'll try and find some other really cool, famous corpses that we can chat about. Yes. Um. But yeah, for right now, um, we're gonna call this episode quits. Yeah. Um. Before we go, however, we would like to take a moment to thank our wonderful friends over at Fierce Ferrets for allowing us to put our podcast, our dumb little show, up on your uh, your website. We thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> if you want to go check out their streams, uh, they're at twitch.tv slash Fierce Ferrets. I am so happy that I have been able to not fuck that up. <laughs> I've been uh, so proud of you. <laughs> it's like Uh, watching my it's like watching my baby boy go to school for the first time (laughs) (laughs) but um so thank you so much jen and luke for allowing us this uh the opportunity to be on your website um Mm -hmm. and yeah um (laughs) If you want to catch us in any other stuff, we are also in Drunk Fandom and uh, Last Light. Uh, Last Light is live usually every Tuesday um, on Twitch, and then it becomes a podcast later whenever I can edit them. Um, And we're working on Drunk Fandom. There have been some changes to the way that Drunk Fandom is happening, though. So uh, you should actually check out the... um, the fierce ferrets website where they give a little bit more information um uh because it's we're aiming for a fall winter release now rather than doing two a year honestly i think that that's a really good that'll do uh, better for us yeah. yeah i mean yeah it'll do better for everybody involved but i think that that makes a lot of sense and i think that was a really good call yeah <clears throat> Oh. But that said, we we're over there on on multiple projects that they're doing over there. Mm. Um, and yeah, if you want to hear us talk about other stuff or play in um, <clears throat> Starfinder, uh, <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs> I th- okay, but the way you ended off on Starfinder, I thought there were more words coming. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I didn't- so I didn't want to cut you off. All right. Uh, we also are on social media on um, Twitter and Instagram. The username is the same on both. It's at the COTV podcast. Uh, so follow us over there for silly memes and uh, updates and what have you. Um, we also have a coffee and a Patreon account. If you have uh, the desire to help us out and the means to help us out, uh, you can drop us a line there. Um, If you are a patron of ours at the $5 level or higher, you gain exclusive access into our exclusive Discord server where you can hang out with us. Uh, There's a channel dedicated to 
uh, suggestions for the show. Like the last episode, uh, one of our lovely patrons, uh, Jerda, gave us the two topics that we talked about. Um, you could also do that just on social media, please. We need help sometimes because our lizard brains can only think of so much. Uh, and yeah, also with a $5 and up pledge on Patreon, you get a special shout out at the end of every episode. Yeah, so that said, thank you so, so much to Brandonson, to Fierce Ferrets, and to Jerda for being our patrons. We adore you so so much thank you tons for your support uh, it means a lot to us mm-hmm. uh, i think that's it i'm thinking that's everything just making sure we wanted to have all of our bases covered yes. so <clears throat> with that we will see you in the next episode whatever that may be and until then sweet dreams Bye.